Hey guys, Davin Lim, board certified dermatologist. So, you'd like to know more about nano lasers or Q-switch lasers when it comes to treating melasma. Here's my take, even though this laser's really old, when I mean really old, it's over 20 years old. Still, in my opinion, it ranks as one of the best lasers falling behind Pico lasers when it comes to treating melasma, but well ahead of even the most advanced technological lasers like your non-ablative lasers and your fancy hybrid lasers. So for me, even though the technology is super old, the lasers themselves are super old, something like a C6 or a red light. They're ancient, but still, at the end of the day, they are still very effective in treating some, but not all cases of melasma. Now, how did these lasers work and what is the difference between the Q-switch laser in the newer Pico lasers. So the Pico lasers offer a lot higher safety margin, right? And they have a lot quicker clearance of melasma because the Pico lasers were using sound, photoacoustic rather than photothermal or photomechanical to actually um, uh, break up the pigment. So because we're using less heat with the Pico second lasers, we have a shorter pulse duration, in other words, a shorter time frame of which you expose a high amount of energy, it shatters the pigment very effectively. Now, the Q-switch lasers are totally the other opposite to the, to, to the other side of the spectrum. They do not or should not shatter pigment in the context of melasma. When you're treating something like the freckle or lentigo or birthmark, that's very different. You want a, a good endpoint, a little bit of frosting, and you want to shatter pigment using a, um, a lot of energy or a significant amount of energy in a, in a relatively short amount of time. But if you try to do that for melasma, it produces too much heat and it's too much inflammation. And as you know, with heat and inflammation, what happens? Your melasma flares up. So when we're using the older technology, the nanosecond lasers, in other words, with the pulse duration or timing between five, with the new ones like the Hollywood and the Hollywood Spectra, to the older ones like the C6, when the pulse duration is a lot longer, it's usually about three times as long. You're looking about 15 nanoseconds. And with these lasers, what they do is that they don't shatter pigment in the context of dialing in the correct melasma settings. What they do is they shrink down your dendritic processes of your melanocyte. In other words, your cell, which produces pigment, what it does is it puts it to sleep and it shrinks down the arms, which means the pigment transfer to the keratinocytes or your skin cells are decreased. So this is a slow but eloquent way of reducing the activity of your melanocytes. This has to be done uh, very cautiously and we have to space it between two to three weeks apart. We now know that if you space it over a short period of time, let's say doing it less than two weeks, you markedly increase the risk of adverse events, in other words, side effects. And one of the worst side effects is your gut ape hypopigmentation or depigmentation because once that occurs, um, it's very hard to fix. Now, I totally disagree with what's in the literature. The literature says it's super common. We do come across it, but if you pick it up very early, you've got that crescent sign in the slight area of um, um, hypopigmentation, in other words, the reduced color. If you stop it, generally speaking, if you stop it early, the pigment does come back. And certainly you can use pigment stimulators in that context. So when you know what you're doing, if you're using low fluences, if you're watching the patient, if you're giving good intervals of uh, spacing, the older Q-switch lasers, in my opinion, still rank really high up there. The downside is that your um, improvement in melasma, it's super slow. So most patients get to see some kind of improvement, usually at week three, week four, but most of them are usually between four to six weeks. And sometimes it can take up to 10 to 12 weeks, or even at the end of the treatment course, which is around 10 to 12 weeks before the melasma actually improves uh, to, to a good degree. Still, with all lasers, as you would know, I'm always a proponent of doing everything else prior to laser treatment or concurrently with lasers. Lasers are not the be all or end all for melasma. In fact, they are only fourth line treatment. So you've got to do all the other stunts, your tyrosinase inhibitors, your vascular modifiers, your um, protection against radiation. So your UVB, your UVA, your HEV, your blue light, as well as your IR, because that's the action spectrum you're dealing with with melasma, because all of those wavelengths can flare it up. So lasers are still a very integral part, especially in my practice. They offer, in my opinion, really good results. Um, and compared to something like a Cosmolan or Dermamolan peel, where you have significant downtime of anywhere between eight, nine days, all the way up to two plus weeks, with these lasers, in this context, there's zero downtime. So you come in, the treatment itself probably takes about three minutes to do, um, and you walk out with just slight, ever so slightly red. There's no pain during the process, but your pigment improves slower. 
So that's another way to treat melasma. It's a slow gain, super safe technique, but at the end of the day, it also remodels skin because what we use it, we use it in what's known as a dermal toning setting. So when we're using the longer wavelength, the laser light itself stimulates your fibroblasts and a few things happen. When you stimulate your fibroblasts, um, you get less wrinkles. But importantly, when it comes to melasma, if you stimulate your fibroblasts, you increase your collagen 4 production. When that happens, your skin is more resilient and hence your melasma tends to improve. But not only improve, you may have remission periods, which is longer, it gets longer and longer, right? Which is pretty good. The other thing that the Q-switch lasers can do is that it can marginally uh, improve your vasculature. Certainly vascular lasers do a better job or your vascular modifiers do a far better job. But the Q-switch lasers have been shown histologically, shown under the microscope, to have some kind of remodeling around the vasculature itself. So here's the summary with Q-switch lasers. Awesome lasers, useful, super safe, um, cost effective, but they do take a little while before you see results. Guys, I hope you liked the video.